it's been reported that Spain is cracking down on Airbnbs and short-term rentals as a whole. By 2028, Barcelona is targeting to have completely eliminated Airbnbs in the city. This is to continue our discussion on a previous video that I did about Airbnb bust, wherein there is a growing backlash against not only Airbnb as the platform, but against short-term rentals all across the world. This coming ban in Spain makes me think, can this also happen here in the Philippines? This is what we'll look to cover and explore in this video. So enough of this intro, and let's go. But before anything, if you are new to this channel, Hi, I'm Mark. It's nice to meet you. In this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments, especially Airbnb hosting or running your own short-term rental property. Now, I know it's been a while since my last Airbnb hosting video. For the most part, I've been trying to observe the local Airbnb market. I've been looking at the new projects, new condominiums that are coming up, which are all potential Airbnb homes. So this recent development in Spain is actually relevant, making me think and reflect if this ban is also a possibility here in the Philippines. So before going into our local context, let's go into the situation at hand in Spain. You might have caught in the news that there is a strong backlash, a resentment against tourism there now. So basically, the local Spanish people are unhappy with over-tourism. A lot of their structures, buildings, art pieces are said to be degrading in quality because of this over-tourism. It was reported several days ago that locals were shooting water guns to tourists in restaurants, cafes, and asking tourists to basically go home that they don't want tourism anymore. And the biggest underlying issue here is really about the shortage of their housing market because of over-tourism, the cost of rentals, and properties as a whole is just going up and up and up. And the locals, the ones who are really needing them, are no longer able to afford rent. The working class, the people who need it most, are being driven out of their decades-old home. And the number one culprit that this is being blamed on would be homeowners operating their properties as Airbnbs. So they no longer need the rental income from the working class because they can jack up their prices, especially if they are in the city centers. So this backlash, this resentment again against tourism has Airbnb front and center being blamed as the biggest cause for the rise of rent. With this in mind, the Spanish government has really taken a strong stand, especially the city of Barcelona, which is the number one tourist destination in Spain. So while this ban may seem ridiculous at the start, it actually makes a lot of sense. And that's in the context of Spain and Barcelona. So let's now put it in our local context. And are we facing this sort of danger, this possible ban of Airbnb, in the Philippines and most especially in our key cities, especially Metro Manila and Metro Cebu. So let's look at the issues on hand. The first would be the concern on over-tourism. In our local context, we also know that there is over-tourism in key tourist destinations, but this would be the exception rather than the rule. So we know that years ago, Boracay had to undergo rehabilitation. You would also know that the main town of El Nido is quite overdeveloped and may also be a candidate for rehabilitation. But for the Philippines as a whole, I don't think there is over-tourism. In fact, we are looking at the tourism industry as a growth driver of the economy. In 2023, it is said that we took in over 5.4 million tourist arrivals for the whole year. And for 2024, we are projected to grow this to a little over 7.7 .7 million. Based on these figures, our growth for 2024 will be close to 50%. So I don't think we have the issue on over-tourism. In fact, that's what we all want. We want more tourists. But I think the problem is really more about our infrastructure. I mean, we have the Naia rehabilitation, we have Clark taking in more passengers, the new Bulacan Airport will all be trying to address these. So in terms of tourism, we don't have that sort of backlash against foreigners, tourists. In fact, we're generally kinder to tourists and foreigners as a whole. So definitely for the most part, we don't have a problem with too much tourists. Moving on to number two, the issue on affordable housing and how old buildings, old homes, family homes where, again, they have been dwelling for years if not decades. The issue in Spain and Barcelona is that these old homes are being converted 
to Airbnbs and driving out the local renters. In our local context, again, I don't think it's the same. It's not as relevant. A lot of the Airbnbs, the condominiums that are being offered to tourists are actually new buildings, privately developed, owned, and operated by the local real estate conglomerates. So here in the Philippines, if you are an Airbnb operator, chances are you did not have to throw someone out on the streets. I don't think there's an issue of rental prices going up and throwing out tenants that have been renting because again the buildings are new and let's face it the government hasn't really given a provision for a lot of housing i honestly don't know much about these housing programs in developed countries i just know that we don't have that same issue wherein we have old buildings old homes that the working class are living in and are able to afford because of subsidized housing so in terms of that backlash that resentment about rental prices going up I think it doesn't apply here because again, we don't have that kind of housing projects. So going back to the question, will this ban be a possibility also here in the Philippines and again, the key cities of Metro Manila and Metro Cebu? I would say that no, from a government level, I don't think we will get to a point where Airbnb will be banned. There's not that much concern about throwing people out because they're not there in the first place. The buildings are not there. The government didn't give us those housing projects. but. This doesn't mean that Airbnb will forever be as it is now. I am actually seeing Airbnb continue to change while short-term rentals and Airbnb is an attractive business. I am still telling you to take a heat of caution. I am seeing a lot of people wanting to invest in new condos for the sole purpose of Airbnb. I've covered this even in my very first videos about Airbnb. The admin actually holds a lot of power. I've heard a lot of horror stories about sales agents doing anything, saying anything, just to be able to make the sale, they will tell you that Airbnb is allowed. And when the property buyer finally gets the unit turned over to him, it ends up that the condominium is not allowing Airbnb. And a lot of these condominiums can actually ban Airbnb just like that. I mentioned in those old videos that Robinson's Land, Ayala, seems to be banning Airbnb. And there's a long list of property developers that are not in favor of Airbnb. So again, this ban might not come in the form of the government coming in, but it may be your local condominium association that is banning your operations. Be very careful about investing in new condominium projects. You never know, you might be allowed Airbnb now and later on it might be taken away from you and you're gonna have to pay for that investment. If you are like most of us, you are paying it in 10, 15, 20 years. So that's a lot of money, a lot of time to be committed to something that you're not sure how you are gonna be monetizing. So again, the government may not ban it. Perhaps more condominiums will even allow it. But what I'm also seeing with the local Airbnb market is that there's just a lot of competition. Everything that's going up right now, new buildings, let's just say they have 30 floors and per floor they have 30 units. Easily, that's 900 new units. If half of those want to be Airbnbs, each time a new building comes up, that's 450 new listings. Those are all possible new Airbnb entrants. And I see that now a lot of people are really wanting to get in on an investment for the sole purpose of Airbnb. And again, it's not that I'm discouraging you altogether. It's just really hard to see how Airbnb will continue to be profitable. It's great that the Department of Tourism is targeting a tenfold increase in tourists in foreign visitors arrival but we just don't know if again this will all happen if the new airports coming up the new roads will be enough to really encourage a lot more foreign travelers and even local travelers going into airbnb i would only do it if you already have the condo meaning you have to utilize it but if you are new looking to invest and you haven't put in your money just yet um, I would really think about that twice. Think about your investment options and think about your other real estate alternatives. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing.